say, this is some party. I didn't know it was going to be this crowded. Who are you supposed to interview? Politicians, artists, scientists, industrialists, all the fancy big shots I can find. How do you tell a fancy big shot from an ordinary big shot without a scorecard? I go around the room eavesdropping. The fanciest big shots talk the least. <laughs> <laughs> you want to come with me? Oh, no. It's too squashed. I don't want to spill anything on my new dress. Okay, I'll be right back. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, pardon me. On second thought, who cares about writing articles? I don't. But you do, so I think you better go. Uh, pardon me. Excuse me. <laughs> Officer, excuse me. Pardon me. Uh, tight quarters, aren't they? Uh, yes, they are. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my God, goodness. Oh, dear, I guess you'll have to stand in line again, won't you? I'm terribly sorry. Oh, no, don't be silly. Well, it wasn't your fault. Yes, it was. Uh, I should have taken the pretzel. Oh, no, it's nothing. Really. Uh, well, I'll get a napkin and some water. Oh, no, that, that's all right. I'll, I'll just go into the ladies' Please, room. Please, I insist. Please let me insist. <laughs> All right. I'll let you insist. Thank you. Um, uh, <laughs> would you mind? Oh, of course not. <laughs> Thanks awfully. Sure. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. Oh, wait. Uh, please, will you get me a napkin and a glass of water? I've dropped a shim cocktail on that girl. <laughs> Dries will never even know it was there. No. I've ruined it, I'm afraid. It, it must be very expensive. <sighs> Cost forty-two dollars and fifty cents. It's an original copy. Really? What a shame. Let me buy you a new one. Oh, no, thank you. That isn't necessary. I'd like to. Well, thank you very much. That's that's very sweet of you, but it's really out of the question. Hmm. Well then. At least let me have it dry clean. Well, that wouldn't be fair. I was going to have it dry cleaned anyway. As a matter of fact, when I put it on tonight, I said, one more party and this has got to go to the cleaners. To whom did you say that? To myself. Uh -huh. uh, not your husband. <laughs> no, I'm not married. Uh, are, you, are you here alone? Oh, no, I'm here with a friend. Oh, and I'll bet he's looking for me. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, what does he look like? Well... He's the handsomest man in the room. Present company excluded. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> but if I were your escort, I wouldn't let you out of my sight for a moment. Miss... Uh... Marie. Anne-Marie. Oh. Uh, oh, by the way, my name is Washington. Andrew Washington. How do you do, Mr. Washington? <laughs> now, about that $42. Now, really, thank you, but no. I mean, it's, it's very sweet of you, but no. Aren't your friends going to miss you? Oh, most of my friends are dead. Oh, I'm so sorry. So am I. Well, you... you must be here with someone. No. As a matter of fact, you're the only person I've spoken to the whole evening. Well, all these fancy big shots don't know what they're missing. <laughs> I say thank you very much. Now, about that fortune. Oh, there he is. i better catch him while I can. It was awfully nice talking to you, Mr. Washington. Bye. Goodbye. Excuse me. Excuse me. I've been looking for you. Me too. 
What happened to your dress? Huh? I had a collision with a lost sheep. <laughs> that cute little man over there, just sitting down. Ann, that cute little man is not a lost sheep. He isn't? That's Andrew Washington. You've heard of Andrew Washington, haven't you? Certainly. He's two presidents of the United States. <laughs> I mean, do you know how much money he has? Well, he has at least $42.50. <laughs> Andrew Washington is one of the ten richest men in this country. That Andrew Washington? Yes. What do you know? I could have taken him to the cleaners. <laughs> What's your professional opinion of spilled shrimp cocktail sauce on a white crepe dress? Just a minute. You can get it out? Oh, that's terrific. It'll be here anytime you want to pick it up. Okay. Thanks. Bye. Good day, madam. I'm here to inquire if there's a young lady who would like to go shopping with a young man. What's the young man's name? Hollinger. Donald A. Hollinger. The A stands for adorable. <laughs> and what is adorable shopping for? A pair of socks to match my eyes. Oh. Well, are you ever going to find bloodshot socks? I know. I know. <laughs> Mr. Newman, that's service. A bonded messenger for Miss Anne Marie. Mr. Newman couldn't make it, so he sent a bonded messenger. What are you having claimed? A 4250 original copy is not a bucket of yogurt. I'm not picking it up. I'm delivering. Oh. Uh, would you please sign here? Oh, sure. And no tipping. No tipping? I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. You know, that's the first bonded messenger that ever came to my door. I've had a lot of regular messengers, but I never had a bonded one. What's a bonded messenger? Well, it means the person who sent the package is insured. Against tipping? No, against losing the package because what's inside is valuable. Oh. Oh, it's a rhinestone bracelet. Who sent it? I don't know. You didn't want a new dress, so I hope this goes with the old one. Yours for smaller parties. Andrew Washington. You're kidding. You're serious. That's the wildest thing I ever heard of. Gee, those are beautiful rhinestones, aren't they, Donald? Anne. They're absolutely lovely, aren't they? Anne. That sweet old man, he was going to spend that money no matter what I said. Anne. What? These are not rhinestones. They're diamonds. What do you mean, diamonds? Real diamonds? A man like Andrew Washington never gave a rhinestone in his life. Well, you're wrong, Donald. A man doesn't buy a diamond bracelet for a girl he just met once. I don't care who he is. Besides, where are you going to buy a diamond bracelet for forty-two fifty? <laughs> I'd say it's worth forty-two um... fifty. About that. See. Uh, maybe forty-five hundred. You're kidding. I have no sense of humor, sir. <laughs> you, you mean to say that those are genuine diamonds? No doubt about it. Should we get another opinion? <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, uh, can I sell you something to go with it? Uh, something in a square cut, uh, about two carats. Oh, no. Thank you. Nothing that small. Uh, wristwatch, earrings, uh, pearls, something. Uh, what can you show us in a copper tie class? <laughs> yes, operator. Washington International Enterprises, Chicago, Illinois. Mr. Andrew Washington, person to person. He isn't very subtle, is he? Yours for smaller parties. Oh, darling, you're taking that out of context. In context, that's perfectly innocent. Hello, Mr. Washington? This is Anne Marie. Remember me? No. He gave you a diamond bracelet because he forgot you. <laughs> did you get the bracelet? Oh, yes, I did, Mr. Washington, and it's just gorgeous. It's the most gorgeous bracelet I've ever seen. But I, I, I really can't keep it. Well, because it just doesn't look right. No, I don't mean on my wrist. I mean on my sense of ethics. Oh, but I assure you, Miss Marie, there are no strings attached. Well, yes, I know that, but... Well, it's just that I couldn't keep it. Well, because my... my conscience just won't let me. Well, well yes, but... but... He's giving me a hard time. I tell you what, I make you a proposition. He's making me a proposition. Naturally. Well, yes. Well, of course. All right. All right. That's a deal. Bye. It's a deal? You said it's a deal. Now, Donald, don't get so excited. It's not the deal you think it is. And I'm surprised at your lack of faith in me. I apologize. What deal is it? He's going to take the bracelet back. 
Well, that's more like it. On the condition that I have dinner with him tomorrow night. You're gonna fly to Chicago? No, he's gonna fly to New York. Just to have dinner with you? Well, of course not. I'm sure he has business here. Did he say that? Well, no, but... Well, then he's flying here just to have dinner with you, and I don't like it. Donald, you want me to give him back the bracelet, don't you? Well, yes, yes, but you can send it back by bonded messenger with a polite thank you note. Oh, that would hurt his feelings. Well, honey, you're gonna have to hurt his feelings sooner or later, aren't you? I don't know. I hope not. And anyway, if I have to, I, I think it would be much kinder to hurt them in person. <sighs> all right, all right. I defer to your better judgment here. Thank you for your understanding. Uh, now, I've got to find a place to hide it. Why do you have to hide it? You've never heard of jewel thieves? Oh, yeah. You, you figure the words out on you already? Well, it's possible. There's no sense in taking any chances. What are you going to do? Well, I'm going to find a safe place. Listen, why not cut a melon in half, scrape out the seeds, shove the bracelet inside, and put it in the back of the refrigerator? Oh, Donald, don't be ridiculous. That's the first place they'd look. In the closet, no. The bedroom, no. The bathroom, no. In the mattress. Yes. No. Sorry. You know, Donald, this is very upsetting. What? Well, to live in a place for two years and realize it doesn't have a safe place. Oh, how beautiful. What a shame the flame has to go out. As in shish kebab, so in life. <laughs> Adequate. Yes, Mr. Washington. Coming from you, sir, that means a great deal. <laughs> if you like this wine, I'll have a case sent to your apartment. Oh, no, thank you. I have a very small apartment. If a case of wine moves in, I'll have to move out. <laughs> Who are you staring at? That cute kid sitting over there with the diamonds. Well, ain't you polite? Come on, what are you, jealous? It's strictly a physical attraction. She's got $10 million. You're kidding. Where? Sitting right across the table from her. The guy she's with is Andrew Washington, one of the seven richest men in the country. You know, you make things very difficult for me. I'm sorry, I don't mean to. I could be a great help to you if you wouldn't reject me. I'm not rejecting you. I may say no to you, but I'm not rejecting. I would like to know that I'm a rich man. In fact, I'm one of the eight richest men in the country. Oh? Donald said you were one of the ten richest men in the country. Really? Oh, well, I suppose he knows best, being a reporter. <laughs> Don't you have any family, Mr. Washington? None whatever. That's why I'm so anxious to help you. Uh, couldn't you think of me as your genie in a bottle? <laughs> yes. Yes, I could. And I have a wish. Oh? Good. I wish that you'll take back this lovely bracelet so that I can enjoy my dinner. Very well. But won't you wear it just for tonight? Please. Just for tonight. <laughs> well, how do you know her? She's a former client. Well, how come all your former clients are doing better than your clients? I say, people are looking at us. Are they? Yes, they, they nod each other, look our way, and then smile. They do? <laughs> Oh, I suppose they think I'm your grandfather. Oh, no, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that at all. You mean you think that they think that, that you and I are... Oh, I'm terribly sorry. Oh, no, don't be. I'm very flattered, Mr. Washington. And I'm deeply grateful, Miss Marie. Coming. Annie, 
sweetheart. Hello, Eddie. I thought I fired you. Uh, what kind of a welcome is that? Uh, so cold? Hello, Eddie. I thought I fired you. Yeah. Hello, Eddie. I thought I fired you. That's much better. <laughs> I uh, just dropped by to tell you how glad I am that you're uh, that you're doing so well. Where? Well, I mean, just generally, you know. Uh, am I keeping it from something? Well, actually, I was just getting ready to go on a picnic hike with my boyfriend. You think he's up to it? I hope so. Why shouldn't he be up to it? <laughs> just a polite comment. Eddie, would you do me a favor and get to the point? Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> Without any further ado, and no preliminary fanfare, here it goes. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready, I'm ready. There's an exciting new play by an exciting new playwright and being produced by an exciting new friend of mine. Yeah. Now, I think they've settled on Henry Fonda for the male lead. And for the female lead, they're looking for a totally unknown girl. That's me. And that's what I said. So they told me to offer you the role. Offer me the... Eddie, Eddie, is this for real? Because if it isn't... Would I lie to you? All right, let me put it this way. Why would I lie to you? I don't know. It's just that... I, I mean, it's so hard to believe. A female lead just, just out of the blue. What's the catch? What catch? There's no catch. There just happens to be one slight little minor complication. Mm-hmm. Describe it. Well, in general, I would say... Uh, describe it in detail. Well, they're still a little short on the financing. Oh. How little? $160,000. $160,000? But they got 2,000 cash. Where are they gonna get the rest of the money? Well, they hope to get the rest of it this afternoon from one certain individual party. Oh. Excuse me. Daddy! Hello, sweetheart. How are you? Fine. Who are you? Uh, Eddie Edwards, public relations. Uh, my card, sir. I'm Lou Marie, Anne's father. How do you do? I've practically offered the lead in a practically produced Broadway show to your daughter. Well, how about that? <laughs> Provided, of course, she gets $160,000 from her boyfriend. From Donald? Where's Donald gonna get $160,000? Who's Donald? Donald Hollinger. He's my boyfriend. No, not him. The other boyfriend. You know, Andrew Washington. <laughs> you must be kidding. My daughter doesn't even know Andrew Washington. Yes, I do. You do? Well, he's one of the four richest men in the country. Seven. Ten. How would you know? Well, Mr. Washington says eight, but Donald says ten. And he's a reporter. <laughs> Who told you Mr. Washington's my boyfriend? Oh, I figured it out. I saw you having dinner with him last night. And I also saw the diamond bracelet he gave you. <laughs> Andrew Washington gave you a diamond bracelet? Well, yes, but not last night. Last night, I gave a diamond bracelet to him. Oh, now, sweetie. <laughs> no offense, but that's a little hard to believe. A pair of cufflinks, maybe, but not a diamond bracelet. And you know I never interfere in your private life. But Andrew Washington is old enough to be your father. As a matter of fact, he's old enough to be my father. Excuse me. Good day, Miss Marie. Look who I met in the lobby. Hello again. Hello, Mr. Washington. May one or both of us come in? Oh, of course. Uh, one or both? <laughs> both. Thank you. Come in. Uh, Mr. Washington, this is my father, Mr. Marie. Uh, how do you do, sir? This is an honor, sir. I've read a lot about you, but I never thought I'd have the privilege of meeting you in my daughter's cheap apartment. <laughs> and this is Mr. Edwards. Uh, how do you do, sir? I'm in public relations. Uh, my card, sir. <laughs> Well, what do we have here? Well, I brought you a jug of wine for our picnic. And I brought you a, a mink coat. Well, thank you. That's a mink coat. Yeah, to thank you for having dinner with me. Hey, you could wear it opening night. With all due respect, sir, I cannot permit my daughter to accept the mink coat from you. Why not? Because people with evil minds will assume there's hanky-panky. Hanky-panky? <laughs> well, isn't there? There is not. Of course there isn't. Eddie, you revealed an evil mind. I thought we were having a picnic. We are, but this isn't it. And I do wish you'd accept the skirts. Thank you, Mr. Washington, but, well, as I said to you last night... Last night you said you couldn't accept a bracelet. The word coat was never mentioned. Well, it is the same principle. Principle, schmincipal, honey. Here's the way I Will look at it. you please stay out of this? 
I guess this is my busy day. Excuse me. Yes? Is there perchance a rat named Eddie Edwards present? <laughs> Whom shall I say is calling? Benita LaSalle. The girl you gypped out of the female lead in an exciting new Broadway play. Ah, uh, sweetheart, it's not very nice to air one's petty grievances in public. Uh, don't worry about it, Mr. Sal. I turn that part down. What are you talking about? I'll tell you about it later. Believe me, Mr. Sal, that part is yours. Sure, sweetheart. All you need is $160,000. Who needs $160,000? A friend of mine is producing an exciting new play. Eddie! There will be no soliciting on the premises. Wow, oh, it's all right for you to talk. What about me? All those years of dreaming, those two weeks of acting lessons, all for nothing. That's show business. Is there anything I can do? There certainly is. Good. There certainly is not. There certainly is not. Excuse me, I'd like to speak to Mr. Washington alone. Yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'll put the uh, picnic things in the car. Uh, let me help you. Well, it's certainly been nice meeting all of you. I hope to have the pleasure again sometime. <laughs> all right, Big Mouth, maybe from now on you'll leave the public relations to those of us with dignity and charm. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Washington. Goodbye. If you ever find yourself stranded in Brewster, New York, don't hesitate to call me. Thank you very much. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Washington. Goodbye, young man. Goodbye, sweetheart. Bye, Daddy. If you think of it, throw in a few words to Mr. Washington about your Aunt Delia. It's time she made a wonderful wife for somebody. I say, I'm sorry if I caused you any trouble. Oh, please don't say that. I should be apologizing to you. Not at all. It's been great fun. But I do wish you'd let me do something for you. Oh, you already have. How many girls have, are given diamonds and adequate wine even for one night? I mean something that you could keep. And I was thinking of something that means much more. Oh? What's that? I'd like you to be my friend. And, and any time you come to New York, I, I'd enjoy the opportunity of seeing you. That would be delightful. I... I say, I've got to catch a plane. Oh, Mr. Washington. Yes? You forgot the coat. Oh, yes, the coat. Why don't you just keep it, eh? I wouldn't do that to you, Mr. Washington. You wouldn't? No. Mm. You know that when a, a man of your income shows an interest in a girl of my age, the world thinks the worst of them. Y yes, uh, I suppose so. Well, I wouldn't want that to happen to me and my friend. No, no, of course not. Goodbye, Anne. Goodbye, Mr. Washington. Mr. Washington. Yes? Yeah? The next time you come in from Chicago, would you mind bringing me some peanut brittle? <laughs> peanut brittle? <laughs> yes, of course. That's a peanut brittle. I say. Do you think the neighbors might think something to see me leaving your apartment in, in daytime? They no. No, I, I don't think so. Oh. Good. Good. Bye, Anne. Best picnic I've ever been on and best fried chicken I've ever tasted. And may I say, the wine you brought was adequate. Adequate? I like that. Well, you should. According to Mr. Washington, a wine has to be excellent to be adequate. <laughs> what is that? I don't know, but I can make a rough guess who it's from. Andrew Washington. I realized you would never ask for anything unless it was extremely important. So I decided to send this immediately instead of waiting till I return. What is it? 300 pounds of peanut brittle. You're kidding. What am I going to do with it? We can't even get it into the apartment. Well, uh, you can eat your way through or open up a shop. Why not? This is a pretty good location. <laughs> <laughs>